Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. Today we are talking about the long distance relationship. That's right, the LDR. The long distance relationship is a very long staple of the queer community. We're gonna talk about why and how you can sort of make that work for you. Reason number one why the LDR is a staple of the queer community is access. In your typical town, depending on where you live, you may or may not have actual access to other queer people. If you live in a conservative town, if you live in a conservative state, if you live in a conservative country, there might not be as many options for openly queer people to gather and meet one another. Versus when you're online, you have specific spaces, dating apps, you trim the filters to what you are looking for. You're given options in the same way that most heterosexual people are given options for dating. Look at it this way. Do you have straight friends? If your straight friends are complaining about meeting other people, think about how much harder it is for you to meet people. That typically will lead to some sort of online, some sort of longer distance communication. And maybe it's a friendship that grows into something more. Maybe it's something you want to be something more, or maybe you're both looking for more and that's how you meet. It doesn't really matter. Next thing you know, you find yourself in the quintessential marker of the queer experience, which is long distance dating. Just to be clear, not everyone experiences this. I do find that the stories about it are more plentiful than the stories that aren't about it. Because you have more access to people, it is easier to weed out the problematic folk. That's a great thing, right? You can check by someone's profile or by how they're interacting with you or other people some of the things that they are interested in, some of the things that they find priorities, some of the things that they spend their time on. If it doesn't vibe with what you prefer for your partner to spend their time on, you can weed them out immediately rather than having to go on a couple of dates before you find that out. Another reason that the LDR is so popular in the queer community is comfort level with our own sexuality. That's right, internalized homophobia. That buzzword is all over a lot of my videos and I'm not gonna take a ton of time to explain it right now. Go ahead and check those out, please. But the idea of internalized homophobia shows up here because you can be who you want to be and cultivate your life the way you wanna cultivate your life with someone who's not in it every day. So distance helps you to be able to figure out who you are and be more open in that part of you and also keeps that distance between you and that person you're trying to build the relationship with so that you can continue to work out your stuff and figure out how you feel about being a not straight person attracted to a relationship with another not straight person. Another aspect of long distance relationships that makes it attractive to the queer experience is the intensity of the relationship itself. When you're in a long distance relationship and you go to see one another, if your time together is four days, it's like 20 dates all wrapped into one, okay? And a lot of times queer dates end up being super long anyway and super emotionally intimate anyway. So when you're having all of that emotional intimacy and that time together really squished together, you could be, I don't know, dating for a month and seeing each other once in that entire month. But if it was for four or five days, you feel like you've had three months worth of time to get to know one another. In a past video, I talked about are queer relationships more intimate? And I talked about it then too. There is a tendency to get intimate faster because you are communicating with someone about like experiences and you don't necessarily have to get someone on board with who you are in order to have a relationship with them. So because that's rare, that ends up being very emotionally intimate very quickly. So that happens in long distance relationships anyway. That part is built in. The way that you share your life with someone you are dating is really your call, how you structure it, whose names you use. Do you tell them about everybody you work with? Do you leave things out? Do you make your work life a little more polished or a little more interesting? Do you make your life less interesting in case they don't like you? I don't, how you do that is your call. But the attraction to the idea of a long distance relationship is real especially in the queer community. If you have found yourself in a long distance relationship, it is also possible that your friends, especially your straight friends, are going to be less than supportive of this. When you hear people down long distance relationships, a lot of times they're doing that because communication broke down in one of their relationships or relationships they saw. The communication breaks down, which means that both are 
less likely to continue to rely on each other. Things change, feelings change. Maybe somebody goes out and finds something closer to home. All of those things are not the fault of the long distance relationship. They're the fault of the people in the relationship. Queer relationships do tend to be more emotionally intimate faster. Again, because of shared experiences and shared understandings of who you are and who each other is and being each other's safe space in a regular everyday life that typically does not have as many safe spaces as they would if they were heterosexual. So if you take that likelihood anyway, and put it online where all you can do is work on your communication skills, of course that's gonna work well for this community. That makes a lot of sense. Let's say you're in a long distance relationship and you wanna figure out how to keep it going. Having regular understandings between the two of you from the beginning is key. For instance, how often are you gonna communicate with one another? How long are you going to go before responding to someone's communication? It's a lot easier for the fear and the paranoia to slip in on long distance relationships because the other person isn't there to give you the reassurance and remind you that they have a commitment to you. And so it's really easy during those radio silence times for our brains to just sort of spiral in all different directions. There's a difference between paranoia and actual red flags. Having an actual red flag of somebody who agrees to your rules and yet never actually follows them, that's a red flag. That's not paranoia. And that's a red flag because you've expressed something that is important to you and the person you're in a relationship with is not respecting that. That's a red flag no matter what the relationship is. I would never be someone who tells someone else to not trust their gut. However, it is a really good idea, especially the longer the relationship goes on, that if you do start to have some worries, if you have some concerns, if you're not sure about certain things that are happening, that you have a group of friends around you that maybe, I don't know, maybe they know the person, maybe they don't, but you have a group of friends around you that you can bounce things off of that have your best interest at heart and also are willing to ask you the hard questions. The amount of trust it takes to be in a long distance relationship is kind of huge. Therefore, when things go south in long distance relationships, it can hurt even more because you really had to be vulnerable to this person that was not in front of you all the time, that could not give you physical reassurance in any kind of way, even just the being in the same room as you kind of physical reassurance. And you start to wonder how much is in your head. You start to wonder, how is this going to work? Is this is this even an option for me? My wife and I were long distance the majority of our relationship. We started out an hour and a half, two hours away from each other. Then it went to across the country. For a while, it was halfway across the world. And then back on the same coast. Then only two hours apart from each other. It was a lot. We did not do long distance well all of the time. But honestly, we've had the conversation before that I don't know if we would have lasted if we weren't long distance because we both had things that we were trying to figure out for ourselves, who we are, how we want that to look, what is that going to mean for my future, for your future, for our future together. We needed to figure that stuff out. And you can't always do that when someone is right there in front of you. There are benefits to having that distance and having that space. The bottom line here is all relationships are different. Your relationship doesn't look like anyone else's and that's okay. I will be doing another video on red flags in long distance relationships because I think that it's very easy for us to ignore some flags and to say, oh, that's just the way our relationship works. Being taken advantage of any relationship hurts no matter where the relationship is taking place, no matter what the level of the relationship is. And that's always going to hurt. And that's always something you want to try to avoid at all costs. Relationship bottom line here, all of the relationships in your life should be based on things like honesty, wanting the best for one another, building each other up, maybe challenging each other when something one or the other is doing that doesn't fit with who that person really is. We should all be wanting what's best for the other people we're in a relationship with, no matter what the relationship is. It's time for us to stop hating on the long distance relationship because it can be beneficial to people to have the emotional intimacy and the connection to people and also have the space to figure out who they are independent of that. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all next week. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other.